It's easy to think the world's next great tech companies will come from Silicon Valley, New York, or Toronto. But innovators from around the world beg to differ, and I'm out to discover who they are and where they're from. From Addis to Jakarta, from Dhaka to Bogota, I'm Dan Herman, and this is Their World, Our Future. Most of us watching this episode are fortunate enough to live in places where turning the tap on and grabbing a glass of water isn't a luxury. But for millions, if not billions, around the world, that act is more dream than reality. Enter Dubai-based startup Hydrowind Energy, a clean tech company that the World Economic Forum says is one of the top 100 startups shaping the industrial revolution through their work focused on creating low-cost, clean water, and clean energy solutions. Maryam Hassani, thanks for joining us this morning from Dubai. Thank you for having me, Dan. Uh, you're the co-founder and chief innovation officer of uh, Hydrowind Energy, a Dubai or a UAE-based uh, energy and water startup. Uh, you were named one of the top 100 startups by the World Economic Forum who will shape the industrial revolution. What, uh, what deserves this credit? Why, why are you getting this type of press? Uh, just first off, we're we're quite humbled uh, for all the attention we're getting and um, all the support uh, internationally even for for what we're doing here. And uh, basically, what we are is a renewable uh, technology um, company that um, focuses on three of the most pressing challenges of the 21st century: so low cost, uh, clean electricity, grid scale uh, energy storage, and water desalination. And it's the latter one that I learned first about uh, because you had a, a very successful Indiegogo campaign around your product with it. I believe it's called the Quench C product. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So um, we had uh, developed and commercialized Quench C in about uh, 15 months. And uh, what it is, is that uh, it's the very first um, low cost handheld water desalination device. So it was originally created for humanitarian purposes, but of course it has its, um, its benefits and um, can be leveraged also by the marine sector and uh, the sailing sector. So, I mean, just from that campaign, we actually uh, secured orders from 96 countries worldwide. So that was amazing. No kidding. And that's, you know, water is perhaps one of the world's forgotten challenges that, you know, we take it for granted in countries like both of ours that you turn the tap on and clean water comes out. As I look through some of your materials on your website and about Quench, this is a, a billion person challenge that you're trying to solve. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the water crisis uh, that we're facing, um, I mean, it's quite it's quite prominent and, and it's uh, quite pressing as well. And that's why we we are so happy to to almost contribute to that. And, and we hope to alleviate the water crisis um, to quite an incredible extent. And this is also with our larger uh, technology. So even in that in, in that um, sense, when you have Quen C, which is almost something that can be used by the consumer themselves, um, you can actually produce up to four liters in an hour, which is uh, quite incredible. And, and it serves really well for its purpose in the humanitarian sector. And our, and our, our large scale products allow you to desalinate water uh, using subsea pressures. So given the kite system, um, it's actually used for mechanical uh, purposes. So it actually brings up the, without of course getting technical on you, but um, through, that, um, through that process, and it's actually a patented process, um, it allows you to desalinate water almost 90% uh, uh, more cost effective than the traditional desalination plant. And also keeping in mind, like we said, cost is an issue, but also the fact that desalination plants are run on fossil fuels. So this makes it 100% clean. And when I think back to when I visited Dubai in the airport, there was a, a photo montage of the development of the UAE over the last, I think it was 30 or 40 years. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, in 1980, it was a relatively deserted place. And then, you know, over the, the course of decades and a very, you know, a couple of decades, all of a sudden the desert gives way to some gas stations and to some oil pipelines. And all of a sudden to what we now see on TV and that we dream about when we think of, you know, this, uh, what looks like paradise. And it's, it's amazing how quickly that's happened. Now, you, in a sense, want to disrupt part of what the UAE has been built on. 
Uh, does that go over well? I mean, actually, I would say it fits quite uh, perfectly in, its, in the UAE's vision because, I mean, rightfully so, we are based on, um, we're all rich country uh, and, and we're uh, quite privileged in that sense to have all these opportunities. And But I think what's really important is that we actually are also almost leading the world in, in renewable energies. And you see this in, uh, I think, one of the largest uh, solar um, solar uh, cities in the world. Uh, renewable energy is, is quite a priority for us as well. And even in terms of water desalination, yeah, we, have, um, we have tremendous support in water desalination just because, I mean, we do live in a desert. But um, that push and that um, uh, perseverance to, to almost um, deviate away from our dependency on fossil fuels is there. And that's where we see the support for renewable energies. And then when it comes to technologies like ours at Hydrowind, uh, we're very much in, in that same space because we're not just in the field of renewable energies, but we're solving for the issues in the new renewable energies field, which is uh, grid scale uh, energy storage and also low cost when you were younger, did you did you think you would stay in Dubai or did you have dreams of going elsewhere? Because I know looking at your CV, looking on LinkedIn, you have the profile of someone who could go anywhere in the world to work. Did you ever want to or was it was it set that you would stay? <laughs> That's quite flattering. Thanks, Dan. But um, Dubai has always been my home and uh, and will remain so. I think in terms of education, there might have been a time where traveling abroad was the best option to get the best quality education. But even then, um, and in my generation at least, we do see that you can you can have those world-class uh, um, institutions and access to world-class education uh, here. You know, it's fascinating. I think for, for years we've pictured that bright young people uh, will migrate to places in the West, in the North. And as you noted, perhaps that's tilting, right? And perhaps the, the gravitational forces or the magnetism of different places around the world, like in the UAE, uh, is shifting. And all of a sudden you capture that talent and you keep that talent. You would think, like you said, like this, this, place, this part of the world is in the right place for innovation, but you see that you find people migrating here just for the opportunities. And, and if I may just saying that, um, given that it's attracting these high potential people, their innovation is bound to happen, right? Exchanging, exchanging ideas. Um, and again, the government making it easy for us almost um, is a great privilege. And, and it's, it's, there are exciting things in the pipeline. It's that realization of the importance of retaining talent, uh, attracting and retaining talent in the UAE that um, I think fueled a lot of the initiatives and, and uh, the support from the government. So as you rightly stated, usually when one thinks about entrepreneurships and, and startups, they think about Silicon Valley. But I think what uh, the UAE is doing uh, and quite incredibly is that it's becoming the, the next, I would say, Silicon Valley and the hub for entrepreneurship. Mm, fantastic. Now you're building a product suite that as you said, it fits very well in the vision that uh, your leadership has set out. It fits in the challenges that the region around you has in terms of both energy and water. But I imagine that the companies that Hydrowind Energy's goals aren't limited to the region. H how big do you think that your company can become? I mean, I think the sky's the limit just because we leverage offshore uh, altitude winds and the depth of the sea as well. So there's potentially any location that has uh, access to the coast, so the offshore winds and the depth necessary to, to house these uh, uh, technology systems, um, the potential is, is limitless. Some places around the world are lucky. Having resources in the ground is ultimately about luck. But having the wherewithal to use that luck judiciously and knowing how and when to use the proceeds to invest in what's next is about being smart. Dubai and the UAE's transformation from Petro State to clean tech and startup hub is a great example of being smart. And as Miriam showed today, the benefits of this aren't just going to be enjoyed by those in the UAE, but they could ultimately have a positive impact on millions if not billions around the world. Hey, thanks for joining today. Please like the video, please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on our next episodes, and I'll see you next time for more of Their World, Our Future.